All right, my name is Hans van Tilburg, and I work for the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, NOAA, the Office of National Marine Sanctuaries. And it was my honor to chair session number two, New Approaches in Federal Management of the Underwater Cultural Heritage for the United States. I chose to organize session two because there are actually very real new approaches for our federal management of this type of resource. There have been some very exciting things that have been happening recently, and I guess I can sum up most of those changes by saying that federal agencies are becoming much more aware of cultural resources as defined by constituents that they represent, tribal and indigenous groups of people in the United States. So it really is not simply resources defined by what archaeologists are trained to understand, shipwrecks. Shipwrecks are still very important. And it's really not just what resources are suggested by the preservation mandate, the physical properties themselves. The discussion has broadened to the point where we have to consider significant cultural areas, locations, cultural connections to natural resources, cultural significance of things that have not usually been included in past preservation management. And so the message with this session, with folks coming from my agency, Office of National Marine Sanctuaries, and also Bureau of Ocean Energy Management, which is, which is involved in the same type of expansive understanding, we're hoping to communicate that to a broader audience. What I hope for over the next 10 years is that um, by doing this, by being more responsive as a federal agency, to resources that are significant to constituents, multiple cultural perspectives and multiple voices, that we can, frankly, you know, gain more trust and more collaboration with groups of people across the United States and elsewhere who have sometimes seen the government as not so responsive to their input and their direction. This is really a type of reaching out to the public to tailor what we do more to what we all consider significant. There are a host of interesting challenges uh, to do this kind of management and I think everyone understands that changing the understanding and direction of any agency managing any type of resource is step-by-step -step process. It doesn't all happen overnight, and any agency, civil or government or military, faces inertia, agency inertia. Um, but we've seen change already, and an opening acceptance already to a definition of broadened cultural resources in marine environments. And uh, so that's very hopeful, and I, I, hope, that change to, I hope that change continues. We had enough time to address, you know, the, the kind of the kind of the outline of this structural change, a new definition in cultural resources, dealing with, you know, incorporating intangible cultural resources like location, you know, where there isn't even a physical property anymore, rather than just things like shipwrecks and aircraft. But we probably didn't address as much what cultural resource management means for places like small island developing states and coastal places that are really going to be impacted by climate change, which we all have to consider and deal with across the board in the coming years, and what that means for cultural heritage management. And so we look forward to expanded sessions in Asia Pacific Conference in 2017.